Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta with my friend Emmy, whose birthday is today because this is being aired on Monday. So happy <laughs> birthday, Emmy. Make sure you guys give Emmy all sorts of birthday love in the comment section below. We, as your friends, I always think birthdays are more fun for people whose birthday it isn't because we get to celebrate the people whose birthday it is because you know friendships family you know we, that's a chance for us to get to celebrate the people in our lives that are important to us and so it's your special day emmy how how i mean even though we're recording this on sunday how is the eve of your birthday how is your birthday feeling this go around this go around the sun um <clears throat> well i've been sick the last couple of weeks um i think it's given me some time to reflect, so I'm grateful. Um, most definitely. Since the beginning of December, with the yoga and all of the other um, activations that have been happening, um, <clears throat> I think that it's kind of like sped things up a little bit. <laughs> It's been a little rough. It's been a little rough. I'll say that. But it's given me some time to reflect. You can come through, honey. Okay. Bye. Yeah, my, my office is not in a very good spot in the house, but whatever. <laughs> Y'all yeah, get to see all of my children. That was my kid, by the way. He's like twice my size. I, I honestly, I don't know how it works. I don't know how a six foot four, almost 300 pound man can come out of a five foot eight woman. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, they're not that big in the beginning, but still like what? <laughs> anyway. know, it's so funny. My grandfather, my dad's dad was six, five. My dad is between six, two, six, four ish. I think he's, you know, his age, I think people get a little, little shorter, but I was looking at, a, I was looking back at pictures of when I was baptized as a baby, like a three month old baby. And my great grandmother, Trixie was tiny. And she was sitting in between her son, my grandfather, who was six, five and her grandson, my dad, who's between six, two and six, four holding me a five pound baby. And she's this tiny woman. And you're right. It's like, she produced that Man, this, it was <laughs> I don't know. It's amazing. No, it's amazing what the what the female body can do. Like the fact that it can pop out. <laughs> I don't know. And he was almost he was almost ten pounds too. 10 my nephew, pounds. yeah. When my nephew was born, um, he came out like a toddler. Like he literally, I remember when he came out and they held him up. Yeah, they pulled him up and do some stuff over in the little baby care away from my sister and I was I saw those little shoulders pop up and I was like how did my sister get that through her hole like no <laughs> I'm it's like, very elastic it's very elastic I'm like she just shot something out the size of a watermelon out the size of like a pen like, how did that happen how did those shoulders get through that tube? I don't understand. <laughs> what kind of sorcery is this? I know. I always say it was the biggest God moment, but now I'm like, hold up. <laughs> what, what, what did, what, how did you do? I want to like, it's like, you know, when you're a little kid, you used to get like a, you would take a straw and you get the wrapper of the straw and you get it wet and put it in this dog, like shoot it out at your friend. Yes. So I was like, you, but it was like a watermelon that shot out. That was my mom. My mom. She used to do that at restaurants every time. She was a troublemaker. My mom. She would. She would make little. She would make little straw spit thingies, and she shoot it. She shoot it across the table at us, and sometimes it would go past our head and like hit the table. And then she just blamed it on you. Go, sorry, my kids did that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love my mom. Oh my gosh, she was amazing. That is awesome. Well, I'm sure your mom is smiling down on you, Emmy. You know. Oh I'm yeah, she's she's laughing her butt off. Oh yeah, she was definitely a nonconformist, a rebel, brought fun to to literally everything <clears throat> for That's sure. Exactly. We should all bring even the hard stuff. It's so funny. Speaking of women's issues, um, I you know with the shadow work challenge we have going on, I've been facing my own 
I have the propensity to overwork. I've always had the propensity and to over to kind of go overboard with like exercising. And um, I had a migraine headache last night. And so I let myself sleep in today um, before I went and taught. And I told myself, oh, you'll just you'll just exercise this afternoon. Well, I just kind of had to have a little sit down, come to Jesus, come to Yahshua moment. And it was like, wait a minute, you're on your cycle right now. You need to be taking rest. Like that's what you need to be doing. And so it's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, you know, speaking of women's issues, I wanted to kind of bring that up because we all struggle. Even those of us who've been doing, I've been doing this for 17 years. And the, those, the artful dodger will, for me, it comes in the form of, no, you have to get this in because no, mm -hmm. actually artful dodger, a female's body needs to be honored. And when it's detoxing, when you're on your cycle in <clears> India, <throat> you, you, re I mean, in India, my teacher thinks we should all be in the spa on our cycles and be like pampered and massaged and like, I love your teacher. I know. I'm like, <laughs> hey, you have a whole conference about this once, you know, and usually my teacher is very like, you know, you do you boo kind of like, here's my opinion, but do what you want to do. And he gave, he actually got really fiery about it. Cause somebody asked about the ladies holiday. Like, is this not chauvinistic? And my teacher was like, no, it is not. It's a way for us men to honor you women because you you ladies Aww. can do things with your bodies that men cannot do. You have abilities with your bodies that men don't have, like shooting a watermelon through the hole the size of a penny, you know, like and, and he was talking. He's like, listen, it's not about you being dirty. You're not dirty when you're on your cycle. It's about the fact that your body is detoxing because it needs to prepare for the next cycle. And in that next cycle, there could be life. There could be new life coming through you. And so you need mm -hmm. to let your body rest so it can prepare for that. And he was like, my wife, I sent my wife to the spa. Sorry, Bryce. No, you're fine. He was like, I send my wife, I send my wife to the spa every month. And all the ladies in the room got silent. You could see every woman calculating in her head, like <laughs> her husband's being like, so guess what? Next period, your ass is sending you to the spa. <laughs> <laughs> and you can oh. see all the men in the room who have wives like getting real uncomfortable. Dollar <laughs> 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 signs racking up in their head, like, damn it. <laughs> Shh, stop don't don't say anything else you you know he's like my wife goes to the spa she's pampered because her body is important and her and he was like and her body's important to me too because that's where my children came through and that's Aww, it. So sweet. Was, yeah really sweet and he um you know and so i i want to you know and that's something that's hard for me as well I, when i first started practicing not when i first started practicing but like I would say maybe five, six, seven years into my practice, early 30s, which seems like a forever ago. I was like, when my practice was at its strongest, and I was like, I'm not taking ladies holiday. I'm going to practice all the way through. And um, I ended up losing my period for a significant amount of time. And mm -hmm. I had to actually start following the, the moon cycle to get my period back. And so that taught me a huge lesson. And so I was sitting here, I was like beating myself up about it. And I was like, what am I doing? I'm on my cycle. That is time for rest. Tomorrow I can get back on my mat again because this is day three for me. So tomorrow is day four and that's a great. And the first three uh, days of a lady cycle is typically, generally speaking, when the uterus is contracting. After that, it's just residual stuff. So the uterus has stopped contracting. So then you can start to, to, to bring the pranic energy back. <clears throat> and so that's something that I struggle with that, you know, um, it's kind of like the whole like, um, food thing but people often think about overeating as being an issue but undereating is also an issue coming from the same wound just reacting differently and so and i struggle with undereating and so i wanted to like i thought maybe i should talk about this just a little bit because we it doesn't matter how many years you've been doing this the same things will continue to come up until you and it's, and it's an opportunity for you to observe yourself and I, you know i had to think about that i was like what would i tell emmy or a student of mine if they were on their cycle and they were beating themselves up about missing a practice or missing a workout i'd be like girl you're crazy you're on your cycle you're not supposed to, you had a migraine last night you're on your cycle like you're not supposed to be you're not supposed to be killing it right now because your body is doing something really important and that detox takes it takes energy for that that's why people get really tired our women get really tired on their cycles while you get headaches sometimes because your body is your somebody told me once your uh the calories you burn it's like it goes up by like four percent when you're on your cycle because your body's doing so much to cleanse itself and it's a beautiful thing because it's preparing 
the next cycle for potentially having a life inside of it. And so anyway, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because I want everybody watching to understand that even though we've been doing this for a long time, the Artful Dodger still appears and still shows its head. Um, and I know, I know that I just want everybody to understand that don't beat yourself up about any struggles you're having. Uh, that's part of shadow work, right? <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Speaking of the divine feminine. <laughs> um, so a whole, a whole herd are divine feminine. A whole herd <laughs> of young, young ones, young divine feminine. So maybe they can heed the advice and be like, yeah, when you're on your period. Yeah. Up. My girl, my girls have, um. I'm trying to change their attitudes toward their um, their moon days. I'm trying to change the name of it because there's just so much negativity around it. And they're just so irritated with their bodies. Instead of working with their bodies, they want their bodies to, to perform all the time so that they can keep up with the demands of school and sports and all these other things. And it's just like, it's so sickening how early they start this preparation of slavery yeah and that's what it is and it's that's exactly what, I, what it is i love and that's what i love and in, in yoga we call it a ladies holiday it's a ladies it's a celebration it's it's a vacation um a lot of men i know get very jealous that you know when you're doing a six day week practice i know men that are like fuck man i want a holiday <laughs> i want to take three days a month off you know there's some shalas out there that will charge less tuition for women than men because women have to take three or are, are asked to take those those days off to rest and so um but yeah i it's it is a holiday it's um <laughs> i know many men who i, I will uh keno mcgregor's husband tin feldman one day he missed a day at the shala in india and he came back and strat was like where were you and he was like oh it was keno's lady hall lady's holiday so i decided to take it with her and strat was like but you're not a lady. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I was awesome. in solidarity with my wife. Um, you know, and and I will say my I I've met, said this before, at 40 years old, my cycle's still really healthy. And I think a lot of that is because after I had that experience in my early 30s, I realized how important and valuable it was to honor that. You know, your boobs go up a size, they're sore, like there's a lot going on in your body during that time and so yeah so that was that's my correction and so i will be resting the rest of the day and tomorrow i will start back again um with my six day a week workout because that's you know this this is my time of the month and so um no emmy you were saying before you got on that you have a sweater on today that oh yeah my my sweater is i used to wear this years ago and i pulled it out of my closet and i'm like oh my gosh i haven't worn this in so long and I couldn't believe how big it was. I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so exciting. That's I used perfect. to, yeah, I, my spiritual awakening started around 2015, 2016. And um, 2018, right before the new year, I was at my heaviest. I was almost 270 pounds. That's hard. Yeah. To and then, um, uh, 2019, the beginning of it, um, I went back to the 12 step program that I had been in and out of for years since my early 20s. And I stayed this time. And I was able to lose 100 pounds and keep it off. And it's been almost four years now. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I love it. That's I love it. <laughs> so amazing and that's so I, i'm gonna ask I, I wasn't planning on doing this but for anybody who's doing the shadow work challenge or if you're just doing your own thing and you've had some breakthroughs and accomplishments or even setbacks i mean i figure what happened to me today was kind of a setback that le led through it to a breakthrough when i was like oh yeah no i need to i want you guys to let us know down in the comment section below on top of wishing Emmy a happy birthday, I want you. I want to hear what all of you guys have accomplished or realizations that you've made about yourself in this journey. Shadow work can be really hard, but so it's really important that we also take the time to celebrate um, the little things too. The little things, you know, it might just be that you didn't think you were capable of finishing a thirty-minute kickboxing video, and you did. You know, like just the littlest of things, there's there's nothing too small. It's all and really important in the in the grand scheme of things. One thing too, before we get into this video that I told Emmy I was just gonna bring up, 
Um, and I'm so grateful. I want to give a huge shout out to Jan and to Sal, who are two of our moderators in the Signal group. Because honestly, like, I, I don't think if it was just us content creators monitoring it, I would be a shit show, wouldn't it, Emmy? Because none of us have the ability to really be in there all the time. And so Jan and Sal are kicking butt, taking care of the group, making sure everybody's taken care of. And so I've got to really shout them out. Um, now, we did a, a couple weeks back, we had some issues, some bots got in. Um, we had some suspicious activity and so um, we've had to kind of monitor uh, who comes in and out of that group a little bit uh, closely um, and if anybody gets removed from the group accidentally just let us know and we'll let you back in um, and so we're asking that everybody have a profile picture in the signal group now the signal group is a private group so once you're in it no one else can see what's going on in the group because it is you can't just go and read it without actually being a part of the group and um, I want to also now in the signal group um, any you can talk about anything you want in that group. There's no there's no rules. Um, it's, it's a group and it's an amazing group. I mean, I'm so inspired by all the conversations when I get to look in and read and people what they're talking about. It's a beautiful, beautiful friendships are being formed. There's so many people in there that have a wicked sense of humor. And I love it. It's fantastic because I love a good sense of humor. And so I want to just make that clear. Um, we had now, now with that being said, it's totally fine for people in the group to have different opinions about things. In fact, that's awesome. If you can have conversations where people have different perspectives and opinions, amazing, because that's how the world go round, goes round. But one thing I think we're kind of all in agreement is, is there can't be any name calling. Um, we had an incident earlier today, and I'm so grateful everybody in the group handled it v in a very classy way. Um, somebody had shared a video of another person in the truther community, and this person uh, called called the person the truther or crazy, which is not a word I really want people calling each other. Okay, and so um, and anyway, the people in the group were very classy handled it really well was said, hey you know maybe we shouldn't like you know i'm kind of paraphrasing what was said we should maybe name call we know some people don't resonate with other people that's totally fine and if you don't like this person that they're the video they're sharing just keep scrolling you know no need to like shame people or um and i think there were some other comments about how this person was upset because there was another conversation going on about something and this is supposed to be a shadow work no, it's the shadow work support group, but people can talk about whatever they want in that group there. If people are are having funny conversations about something, then that's fantastic because sometimes that is the support you need. Sometimes that is when you're having a rough time. Sometimes it is fun just to be able to laugh with your friends about stu stupid stuff in a private group. And so I want to make that very clear. Just because it's a shadow work challenge does not mean that people are restricted to only talk about shadow work. We are not a cult. I want to make that very clear. That behavior, trying to micromanage what other people are talking about is cult behavior. The only thing we don't want is name calling. Okay. And this person who was doing the name calling did, we did not remove them from the group. They removed themselves. They left the group because so many people said, hey, that's not cool. You know, we're not going to call people names. We're not going to you know, micromanage what people are talking about. Um, and so I just want to make that very clear. Anything, this is a group of really incredible men and women. Um, and nothing is off limits. If you want to get up and say, yo, I just had a crazy dream about a leprechaun and a unicorn and talk about it. That's totally fine. You know, that's, that's, that's totally fine because the, the journey of being a human is not just your shadow work. It's not just your light work. It's you as a human living your life. And we all need friends. And that's what this group has turned into. It's group. In, it turned into a beautiful group of friends all over the world. And so I just want to, again, want to reiterate, we're not a cult. Emmy is not a cult leader. I'm not a cult leader. Jan, Sal, we're just moderators. That's it. The group belongs to everyone. It belongs to Ep so you can talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. You can even get in there and say, my husband really upset me today. This is what happened. Can I have some advice? The only thing we just don't want again is name calling. We don't want name calling and we don't want we don't want someone to be scolded because they shared something that someone else doesn't like. Again, if someone shares something that you don't resonate with, that's OK. We're not all going to resonate with everything. Just keep scrolling. That's it. You don't have to then go chastise someone because they like a person you don't like.
that's not how it works in the, in the signal group. So I just, does that make sense, Emmy? Or do you want to add anything to this? Well, you know, I think that we've gotten so used to being censored that we expect it. And that is sad. Um, so I, I am just really, really grateful that we are, um, that we have people who are willing to um, look at this on a daily basis <clears throat> and keep it safe for everybody so that we can have a place to come and talk about whatever it is that we want to. I mean, it was awesome. There was a conversation about plant medicines and, you know, plant medicine, um, there's such a stigma um, built around it, you know, and, and they've done that intentionally because they want you to take pharmaceuticals and not plant medicines. And, you know, I, I think that there was a, a, a big sigh of relief uh, among the people who do partake because it's like, okay, whew, you know, I'm among people who are understanding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's really important. I think plant medicines are brilliant. Yeah. They've helped me in the past greatly. I mean, when I was coming off of, um, I was on six different pharmaceuticals. It started out with one. Uh, and it, I, they kept adding more and more because the one that I started out with caused symptoms that needed more medication to control. And it ended, it almost ended up in kidney failure. And it's like, are you kidding me? And I'm getting off this stuff. That was 2017. And um, I used plant medicines because I couldn't sleep. Yeah. I couldn't sleep. My anxiety was through the roof. I mean, these medications had formed pathways, new pathways to my amygdala. And I was like in a prison of my, of emotion, of negative emotion. And if it wouldn't have been for God made plant medicines, um, I probably would have went back to pharmaceuticals to cope because it, it's just, it's dang near impossible. I mean, they make it so hard mm -hmm. once you start taking this stuff to stop. Yeah, make it almost impossible. In fact, when I called one of the manufacturers, they urged me to get back on it. Oh, clearly you need medication. Clearly you need it. I'm like, no, can I please speak to, you know, a manager or I wanted to file a formal complaint. I called probably three times and got the runaround for several hours and never actually ended up getting anywhere to file a complaint. It's just, it's terrible. But anyway, I digress. Everyone knows I'm a fan of microdosing. So it's, yeah, mm -hmm. you can talk about plant medicine. You can talk about literally anything you want. We're not, you are not censored in that group. Um, the only thing we just ask you don't not do is not name call. Now, with that being said, if you do name call, we're not going to kick you out. We're, we're just going to probably remind you, hey, let's, let's have, you know, you can say, I don't like this person for X, Y, and Z, but don't, don't name call and don't chastise people who do like that person. Okay, that's not, we're not, you know, that's, that's a form of abuse, in my opinion. And so we're, we're not going to do that. That's just not cool. Mm -hmm. And most people and I just I really just want to applaud. I left a voice message in the signal group. Everybody in that group before I was even aware of the situation going on, it had already taken care of itself. And I was reading back through all of the comments. And I just have to applaud all of the people who were in the group, when that comment was made, who responded in a very respectful way and just said, Hey, you know, like, it's cool if that truth, the video that was shared, you don't resonate with that. That's cool. Like you don't have to resonate with everyone, but maybe let's not name call and maybe not, let's not like shame people who like this particular person because we all resonate with different people and that's okay. And if, and if you don't like the video that was shared or the post that just keep scrolling down, there's more posts, you know, you don't have to respond to everything. And, um, and yeah, just because it's this, this person made a comment about, I thought this was a shadow where we should we'd be talking about shadow. No, the, it's a shadow work support group, of course, but, sh but true shadow work, which tells me this person's probably never really done true shadow work because true shadow work is going to pull out all sorts of stuff. All, I mean, there are days where you're pr you're doing your workout or your journaling and you're going to be taken over with fits of giggles and you don't know where they've come from, you know, and so you're going to need to know that you have friends that are that understand what it is you're doing. And that's what the support group, group is for. It's not that we talk about the dark stuff all the time. It's that you have people that you can reach out to and be like, man, I had, a you know, just just to know you're not alone, you know, and that's so important. And so I really just want to. um applaud all of the people in there because you guys really showed your maturity and you showed your level of understanding and compassion because when that person was name calling 
you handled it with respect and you handled it with dignity and you did not react in the same way that they reacted. And so I want to just applaud you guys because that, that took a lot of um, integrity and, and, and that's amazing. And so I thank you guys. I thank you guys for handling it that way. Um, all right. With that being said, Emmy, we got some like Mac daddy solar flare coming up, don't we? Oh man. Yeah. Um, so coming in today, coming at you today, straight from the sun. <laughs> hey, it's, 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 it's Emmy's birthday present. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys uh, are interested, but there is um, a channel that I follow on YouTube called Suspicious Observer. And he is all about the sun and the sun activity. And he's got a video up uh day or two ago of of the actual flare and um it is beautiful oh my gosh it's it's like sparkling and oh my gosh i watched it like five times i'm like that is amazing um so yeah we oh you muted you muted yourself there I you did. Go. how did i do that what did i do i don't even know <laughs> uh <clears throat> okay so we have a long duration X class solar flare. And the difference between the, you guys remember a few weeks ago, we had several X flares come at us, but they didn't really do anything. And that's because they were, um, they were called impulsive. And the impulsive flares are very, like a really quick flash. So the, the immediate radiation is, is there, but like, the impact when the the energies come to earth is not as as not nearly as powerful as uh, a long duration and this x flare that we had the other day um is a long duration x flare and <clears throat> it, it, they're expecting the kp index to go possibly up to eight it's pretty high so anyone with heart issues uh, psychological issues, um, those kinds of issues in particular can be exacerbated with geomagnetic storms. Um, it can affect satellites. Um, if you're in northern states like um, northern Michigan, northern Wisconsin, um, Canada, yep, Canada, um, oh, all, Canada, Canada. <laughs> all of Canada, you're probably going to get to see some northern lights. So if it's clear, I'm I'm hoping it's clear. I'm setting an alarm tonight for like one o'clock in the morning so I can go out and see. Um, see if I can see anything. On your birthday. On my birthday. That'd be awesome. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, just just be aware. Lots of ascension symptoms. I know I woke up this morning with a screaming headache. I and had a migraine last night, like crazy migraine. Yeah. It it could cause all kind of stuff, ringing in the ears, headaches, nausea, dizziness, aches and pains, fatigue, tiredness, like flu symptoms. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on there with the sun. And then also people were interested in figuring out the types of, or the quality of energies in their chart. So I have this cool book here. It's called Astrology Made Easy. And it's by Yasmin Boland. This was one of the first astrology books that that I ever got. And I have all kinds of tabs in here. Like, I really, I really like this book. Um, <clears throat> oh, and now I lost my page. <laughs> okay, well, while I find my page, she shows in here how to find the quality of your chart. And the quality is the different types of energy, uh, cardinal, fixed, or mutable. And sorry, Bryce, why don't you talk about something for a second while I find this again? <laughs> no worries. You know what I'm going to do while you're doing that? I'm actually going to um, pull it up for people. What's the name of the book again, Emmy? Um, Astrology Made Easy by Yasmin with a Y, Boland. 
Okay, it looks like they actually have a PDF available, you guys. So um, I'm going to pull. I'm going to just going to click on the first. It's always Amazon as the first link that pulls up. But um, here I'll share screen quickly. Um, and this is so cool. We talked about this in our last episode because we know the doshas. We know all these um, things kind of line up together. And so, and I am always telling people, do your own research, learn this yourself as well. And so I will put a link to this book down in the description box below um, for you guys to order. Yeah. So on page 35 of this book, um, she has, what I liked about it is that she has different exercises for you to do um, where you can write things in the book according to your chart. Yes. So, um, can I share my screen? Yeah, I think you have permission. See if it works. Okay. All right. Okay, so this is my um, brother's chart. We're going to just use this as an example again. Uh, okay, so on page 35. So, for your sun sign and your moon and your ascendant, you're going to give each of these two points, okay? So for my brother, his son is Aries. Aries is cardinal, okay? On page 37 of the book, she gives all of the different qualities for each of the signs. So I would put two points for cardinal, for his sun sign. And then the moon is cancer. Cancer is also cardinal. So there's another two points for cardinal. The ascendant is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is mutable. So he's got so far two points for, or four points for cardinal and two points for mutable. And then it's one point each for the rest of the planets. So then you would just go through and write it all down and then add up the points. Does that does that make sense? Should I should I go through and actually do that for my Yeah, and let's explain quickly to people that missed that. So cardinal fixed immutable. Can you explain quickly again like what that means and how that pertains to your work and like your exercise and stuff? Yes. Okay. So cardinal is very leader-like. Um, people with a lot of cardinal energy, as far as exercise is concerned, would do well with um, shaking up and changing up their goals frequently, like every four to six weeks. Set a new goal and work towards that goal. You can use the same kind of exercises. That's fine. But setting new goals to keep yourself motivated is probably what's going to be best for a person with a lot of cardinal energy. Someone with fixed energy, I have a lot of fixed. Most of my energy is fixed. So someone with a lot of fixed energy would do well sticking with the same thing and just working through. Like, like I think that's why it's been so easy for me to stay so disciplined with the yoga is because I have a lot of fixed energy in my chart. I'm able to stick with something for a very, very long time. That's always been um, uh, a quality that I've had. I've been able to, to stick with something for a long time. People with mutable energy do well changing it up. So like every four to six weeks, do a different type of exercise or or a com combining a couple of different types of things to keep it fresh and interesting for you. Because people with a lot of mutable energy crave change. They need something different. They get very, very bored with the same thing over and over and it loses its luster and they just don't feel like doing it anymore. And so they'll give up on their, on their goals. And then a lot of times, you know, uh, we get down on ourselves like, oh, why can't I just stick with something? Or why can't I just do the same thing for a really long time? And I think that's really doing ourselves a disservice because, you know, you really have to um, honor yourself and, and the way that you are and your tendencies and do something that is, is going to be beneficial to you and your particular um, energy set with your chart. So, going through real quick here. 
for my brother. His son is in Aries. So that is cardinal. And I'm sorry, I didn't have this done prior to the Zoom, guys. I had to go help my husband today. He didn't have any help with his um, new business and he really needed somebody to go with him. And I'm really glad that I went because I just forgot how stress relieving it is to do physical labor. My husband's a carpenter, by the way, and he, he owns his own handyman business. And he was called in to fix this brand new house, this brand new house that looks like garbage. I feel so bad for these people, you guys. Oh my gosh. But, you know, even though they'll have to pay extra money that they already paid the builder for to do, my husband is is a master at his craft and, and they'll be happy. I'm sure he'll be. And he really, really enjoys um, making people happy with this, with their stuff. So that's why I don't have this done. <laughs> That's okay, because you're kind of talking people through it for themselves, because I find this very fascinating as well. Okay, yeah. All right, so sun is in Aries, which is cardinal, and then his moon is in Cancer, which is also cardinal. So that's two points, two points, and then the rising sign. Now, the rising sign is always going to be at the very start of your first house. So that's where you can always look for the The rising sign is always going to be at your first house. That's the start of your first house, always. And it's always going to be over here on the left-hand side of your chart. That's why everyone's chart has different um, signs starting over here. If you notice that, when we'll put up different charts and there'll be different signs over here. It's never the same. It's because it always starts with your rising sign. Um, okay, so and rising sign is depicted with an AC. Uh, so Sagittarius, which is mutable. Okay. And then Mercury. Mercury looks like this little, it looks like Venus with horns. <laughs> Mercury is in Aries. Aries is cardinal. So that's one point, one point for Mercury. Venus is in Aquarius. Aquarius is fixed. I knew it. <laughs> Aquarius just knew it. <laughs> okay. And then Mars. Mars is in Libra. Libra is cardinal. Boy, my brother's chart, even though it's completely different, has a lot of the same energies as my husband's. Interesting. Interesting. Um, okay, so Mars in Libra. Jupiter. Jupiter is in Scorpio. Scorpio is fixed. Saturn. Saturn's in Libra. Libra is cardinal. Point. Uranus. Uranus is right here in Sag which is mutable. And at the end, I'll give a list of all of the different signs in mutable and then all the ones in cardinal and fixed also. So you guys have a, a list here. Neptune. Neptune is also in Sag. And Pluto. 
Pluto right here, and Libra. So my brother is definitely cardinal, has a lot of cardinal energy. I don't even need to add these up and I can tell you it's cardinal. Um, so that's an example. Let's go through an example. Um, I'm just going to list off here. And let's clarify quickly, um, your brother, the chart we're using, he is no longer alive, correct? Yeah, he's passed away, which is oh, why yeah. I use, yeah. which is why I no, use this chart as an example. Yeah, yeah I, I would, you know, even though, even though birth records are public information, I would be very cautious with sharing your chart information with anybody, especially publicly. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's, you're not going to share your social security number publicly. Don't share your your astrology chart either no they use it they can use it they can yeah. use it okay all right so the cardinal energies are aries cancer libra and capricorn and notice there are one of each element so you have aries which is fire i was about to say earth yeah Cancer, which is water, Libra, which is air, Capricorn, which is earth. So each of the qualities has a, a particular um, elemental. Okay, so the fixed energies are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Holy shit. All of mine. <laughs> My rising is Leo. My moon is Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> All fixed. After 17 years of yoga, I could have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, and the mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. It's interesting. It's interesting to me. Because I'm a double Pisces. My sun and moon are in Pisces. And I still have fixed. I still have predominantly fixed energy. I think my double Pisces is the only mutable energy I have in my chart. <laughs> Everything else is fixed. Well, you just so my boyfriend is Gemini um, birth sign. And then he's a Virgo moon sign. I don't know what his rising is. He's That's all mutable too. It's very interesting, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Yes, indeed. And so that helps people. It's kind of like understanding the dosha system. It helps you understand you better. And so it's kind of like we talked about the solar flare. I told my yoga class this morning, I was like, we can't stop what's coming. But what we can do is we can learn to, to, to ride the waves through. It's like Marnie Alton says, you can't control the waves, so you learn how to surf. Right? Like, you know, and so I think sometimes we know our energy we're able to understand ourselves better mm -hmm. and it was just like when you go through when you have cptsd or ptsd you're able to then understand that was one of the biggest revelations when i went through trauma therapy was understanding that i actually have an anxiety disorder it's called complex most post-traumatic stress disorder and no not everybody feels this way and this is what this is and this is how we we work with it and once you know that, I know, Emmy, we've had conversations off air before about that. Once you know it's coming, it, it takes the power away from it a little bit. Yes. A and lot bit. A lot bit. <laughs> because you see it. it still comes to visit every now and again, but you're like, okay, this is going to pass. I know I'm having a panic attack right now. I've got to ride the wave of it, but I know what it is. Mm -hmm. it's not it's not real in that sense it is real but it's also not real you know my fear is not real it's just uh, and it's a result of something and with that being said with the astrology with the dosha then you can go aha like i said in one of my vlog videos like there's someone on my i know that coconut oil is really in vogue right now it's real in vogue to be cooking with coconut oil but coconut oil is terrible for vatas and someone keeps posting about it. I'm like, no, 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 It's great for kappas. It's good for pittas because it cools the pitta down. But for vatas, it's a death wish. And so knowing this is power though, right? And so if you're fixed energy, you can understand yourself better and how to work with that. You can't change it, but you can work with it. And when mm -hmm. you learn how to work with it, like working with your dosha, then you all of a sudden can lead a healthier life. 
and feel better in your body because you're not trying to work against your own nature, you know? And I believe that your astrological alignment, I mean, I was born 10 days early. I was supposed to be born on Valentine's Day and I came 10 days early. I, I was actually the most on time baby out of all of my cousins on my mom's side. All, I had one cousin who like really rocked it. He came in two months early. So, um, so we come early and we come small. We are born small, <laughs> early and small, but, but you look at that. So I, I came in at February, on February 4th, 1983. Now get this guys, my soul knew what it was doing because my great grandfather a man named Dr. Joseph Bryce, where I get my name from, my mom's maiden name, his birthday was also February 4th, not 1983, many years before. He was long gone when I was born. Well, guess what? Dr. Joseph Bryce was a 33rd degree master mason. How karmic is that? Wow. I have his name and I share his birthday. And what am I doing? I'm trying to course correct. Mm-hmm. So you think my soul knew what it was doing was like, guess what? We're going to come out right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my cousin who was born two months early, like that changed his whole Zodiac makeup from what he was supposed to be to what he was and what he is. And he's very healthy now. He's married. So it's a great job. You know, very healthy. So it's, it's all designed perfectly it's all designed perfectly and it gives you information about yourself you know with with my sign being or with my rising sign being a leo um i can see that because I'm, I'm able to go on youtube i'm able to do things like that but actually I'm, I'm what they call an introverted extrovert no sorry an extroverted introvert i actually really really love my alone time and I'm kind of a homebody, but I can go on YouTube and do shows. So you see how you can work with you. If I, if I, if I, since I am, since my natural in my natural nature, surprisingly for a lot of people is to be an introvert is to want to stay at home and read and not, and take baths and not go anywhere. Um, the fact that I am, have a rising Leo, I can use the rising Leo to do what I need to do, to, to teach a big yoga class and be totally fine, to, you know, to be on YouTube with Emmy. And so we see how we work with, we can use these to our advantage. It's like our soul was like, we're going to create a GPS system so you can navigate your life, you know, and, and, and get the most benefit, not just for the purpose of your job to, to the macro, but also for you, for your micro work as well, for the real important work, which is your work. So I, I really, I just find this stuff so freaking fascinating. Like it's so, astrology is how God talks to us. Mm -hmm. I remember the day that I started studying astrology. I have a funny story. <laughs> so I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to use my words carefully here. I'm going to self-censor. Um, so the lockdowns happened and um, they were recommending like forcefully these things okay and i had worked in a chemical plant for a number of years and we had osha training every three months and so i i knew i knew what ppe was i knew what different things were rated for different things i knew what they would protect you from and what they wouldn't and i was just like wait a minute they're telling us that we can wear these things for eight hours. I'm like, it, it was shoved down our throat that we, it, there was a 15 minute time limit and we could have been heavily fined or fired for not operating within these guidelines. And so when that came out, I was just like, wait a second. And then I went to OSHA and looked up their stuff and they started changing the laws to fit the story. And I, I was just like, okay, something is going on. Something's going on. And then I started researching and then I started finding stuff out um, about narratives and about fear and how they use fear. And then I got pissed. And then I was like, okay, where are fear narratives? And I started looking everywhere for fear narratives. And the biggest, most pervasive fear narrative is in the church with the concept of hell. And I was like, oh, 
And then I, I had about a week where I, I was just like ghostly white and shock. I had d- dove down a whole bunch of rabbit holes and kind of red pilled myself all in a very short period of time. And I really think that I put myself in shock. Um, but wow, what I had found was astonishing. And I was like, okay, all right. What have they told us, you know, especially the church, what have they told us that is bad? And the first thing I thought, well, astrology, okay, I'm going to start studying this. <laughs> and I'm like, what else do they tell us we shouldn't do? Oh, crystals. Let me look into that. <laughs> well, and here's the thing, you guys, like, it's so, it's so silly because, like, darkness, I always say, you guys, like, if you're, if you think the, the controllers created some of this stuff, you are giving them way too much credit. Darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can. That's science. If you think Lucifer created shit, then you are either real stupid, don't understand science, or you are heavily brainwashed, or you are giving the controllers way too much credit. And so with that being said, if darkness can't create anything, who created the constellations? Mm -hmm. God, uh, the real God. Who created? Job Job said... Uh, in the book of Job, he said, you know, who can change the Maseroth? The Maseroth is the Zodiac. Who can change that? Nobody. God created that. God made that. And we know the bad guys understand. So, and I will also encourage people, if you're still struggling, to look up the Hess Act. Now, it's funny. When I first started talking about the Hess Act. They've removed stuff. They have removed stuff. When I went back to look up what yep. I had saved, I had bookmarked these pages on the Hess Act. And when I went back to go 404 not found, 404 not found, yeah. 404 not found, they're Isn't erasing. that interesting? They keep, they keep, and I, I think I'm the only person that's really been talking about the Hess Act. Um, so isn't that interesting? When does a, when does a rattle say rattle? When it's scared. Scared. So I, when I, I found the Hess Act when I was studying, um, um, Agartha. And I was looking at uh, one of the missing people that was doing stuff with the Nazis in Antarctica. And that's when I found the Hess Act. And basically, to make a long story short, what happened with them? What happened was, before the Hess Act, before World War II, now we had at the turn of the century, there was a lot of spiritualists. You think about Madame Blavatsky, like all these seances that were going on. People were getting back in touch with spirituality and i think this was post mud flood so they were like whoa wait a minute what's going on um and most people under had a had a base understanding of astrology at that time and a base understanding a fundamental understanding of divination okay so the hesat comes around and there's a whole story behind it uh but just to just to sum it up a cliff notes version the nazi party worked with the pope to basically create a narrative that astrology and all this divination was of the devil because what's preached from the pulpit is taken a lot of times as the word of god and so people started to become fearful of astrology and fearful of divination um why did they do that because they wanted to make it they wanted to dumb us down because you cannot change the zodiac so what does that mean that means that the bad guys have had the roadmap this whole time and we haven't. They know where we're going and so they're trying to derail it because we are worked off. That's why I always say like, you know, the hippie revolution was, in my belief, was orchestrated by the three-letter agency, but they did it because they were trying to derail it. They were trying to derail the awakening. They knew astrologically that the awakening was upon us, that we were on the heels of the age of Aquarius, which is the end of Gog and Magog, where we ascend. So they knew. So if you merge that with the law of one, they knew that Earth was going to ascend. Now, are we going to go positive or are we going to ascend to negative? They're both in ascension. So if they can derail the consciousness of mankind, then they can bring it to follow the negative path versus the positive one because it's going to happen they knew that they had the roadmap okay it pisses you i mean it pisses me off so much 
So that's why we keep saying like consent, 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 because we have to not give consent, right? And we have to start taking our tools back and taking our power back. God gave us astrology for us to understand time. All right. And his time, God, God, Father, Mother, her, him, Sophia, source, whatever you want to call it, source creator. I don't think they, source creator really cares. So that we would understand where we collectively were going. Now, the joke's on them, on the controllers, because we figured it out anyway. So <laughs> that was, I mean, we kind of got to play our little small violin for, for the controllers because, man, they tried so hard. Like, slow clap, they tried real hard. <laughs> they did a lot. They were real patient. And they they did a lot to try, and we, we still woke up. We still did it. We still woke up with all... The, the deck stacked against us with the card stacked against us with everything taken from us, all tools taken from us. Um, you know, my, my parents were pretty cool about the whole astrology thing. As like, as a teenager, I was really into the astrology thing and my mom would let me get stuff with Aquarius on it. Cause that was my sign. And, you know, so I'm, I'm grateful to my parents for being kind of cool about it. Even though the church said it was sinful. Um, I always read horoscopes just to see, you know, but I really started to understand it when I or take a deeper interest in it when I got into yoga because I realized that the Joyce family was an astrology family and like how much it's kind of around the same time I started to really get into the doshas, like how detailed and looking at my Western chart versus my Vedic chart, which for a lot of people, the Western chart and the Vedic chart look very different for me. They were identical. Um, they said the same things. And on the Vedic chart, there's a house of yoga. And I don't think that's in the Western chart, but I remember sitting down with my philosophy teacher in India, who one of my philosophy teachers who also does the Vedic charts. And he was showing me my chart and he was laughing at me. He was like, you have so many planets. It, he was like, you have more planets in the house of yoga than most of the gurus do. He was like, you had no choice. <laughs> had no choice. As I'm sitting in India, he's telling me this. I'm like, I kind of, I kind of figured that, <laughs> but, but so they even have the house of, so I was like, oh yeah, okay, I, you know, I figured, you know, so, um, and so it, it tells you a lot about, about if you, if you get your Vedic chart done, it's going to be a little different than the Western chart for some people, but you know, but it's, it's beautiful because it's kind of God's love note to you. Mm. It's God's love letter to you. Like, okay, my child, this is what you're here to do. And you can do it. And I've given you the tools to do it. So I really, I think a lot of people, though, are starting to kind of wake up to the fact that this stuff isn't bad. Nothing that's created on God's earth is bad. The stars are beautiful. We don't get to see the stars that much in Atlanta because we got too much city. But if you are living in an area where you're not around a lot of city and you can go outside and just look at the stars, they're beautiful. And they're sentient beings as well. Yes. So, you know, and it's, everybody loves the song from the fifth dimension. It's the dawning. Everybody dances when that song comes on. So mm -hmm. we're the ones that get to usher it in. So yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, you guys, Emmy, is there anything you want to end on today? Um, I don't think so. I think we said everything we wanted to say. I don't know. I my mind is a whirl. It's it's been it's been a couple months. <laughs> it is like I I said to my class this morning. I keep because I was telling them about this Mac Daddy solar flare. I was like, I keep waiting for the curtain call, like the last scene of the play where the Rockettes come out doing their kick line, and the curtain call comes, and they keep going. Now for Act 45, for Act 46, I'm like, where's the new girl? We're not, we're not done yet? We're not done yet? Okay. Okay, a whole other act. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but you guys, I know we're coming to something pretty cool in March, and we can do a, for a video um, soon about everything that's going to be happening in the month of March ast astrologically. But for now, you guys, just with that Mac Daddy super flare, if you start to feel your emotions get heightened, just be like, oh, awesome. there it is. Also, too, we just entered Pisces season and we have a Pisces new moon. So the sun and the moon are in Pisces right now. And Pisces is about deep stillness. It's about the feminine and the yin and the darkness and the going within. So if you are feeling a lot of 
um, just internal eruptions. Just know that, you know, it's just the, it's just the time right now. It's just the time. And if you've had a rough couple months like I have, you're not alone. It's okay if you can just put your hands down and open them up. And no matter what you're feeling, however uncomfortable it is, or awful, or horrid even, if you can just put your hands down and open them up and say, welcome. Okay, now I'm feeling dread. Okay, welcome. Welcome, dread. I see you. Lean into it. Feel it a little more. These emotions are not going to kill you. And the beautiful thing about allowing yourself to feel the really, really hard shit is that you get a full range of the heart. Yeah. You, you get to feel, that's the beauty of heartache, is you get to feel the full range of the heart. Without heartbreak and heartache and all these really, really tough, difficult things that we go through, we don't know what we're capable of. We just don't, you know? So as hard as it is, you know, this too shall pass. I was about to say that it always it passes. Hard. And yeah. I love, I love what Shanti says. Like when the, when the dread comes up, when the abandonment, when all the bad stuff, bad stuff, the, the, the uncomfortable feelings come up, you know, Shanti's like, okay, okay. Abandonment. What are you here to teach me? What do you want to tell me? Just by saying that to yourself or out loud or journaling it, I feel my abandonment issues coming up. I feel my jealousy issues coming up. Whatever it is, betrayal. Okay, betrayal. I feel you coming up. What do you want to tell me? What do you need to teach me in this moment? Because once you ask it that, and that's what I love in India, the demon, the character of the demon is short for demonstrator. What's a demonstrator? A teacher. So it takes the scariness away. Okay, anger. What are you here to teach me? You're here to teach me something. What is that? Instead of trying to push those feelings away, ignore them, shove them down, they're just going to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Until you actually say, sit down and, and humble yourself and be that pupil and say, and the minute I feel like you open yourself up to, to learning from these feelings, um, they start to dissipate. They start, they start to transmute. And the less likely you are to project them onto other people. You can see the, say the same thing for Joy. Hey, Joy, it's good to see you again. What are you here to teach me now? Mm -hmm. Hi, happiness. Hi, peace. You're back again. What are you here to teach me now? Yes. And that's it. You just journal and know that this too shall pass. And if you got to cry, go freaking cry. Like there's no, shame. Oh yeah. I cried the other day for two hours straight. I couldn't stop. I, I did this meditation in one of my uh, course in miracles classes and I had this vision and it was, it was kind of like, it was a pimple popper. It was a pimple that got popped and this eruption happened and it just came out and there was no stopping it. And it was really, really profound. It was really profound. So just allow it. Just don't fight it. Just allow it. Your feelings are not going to kill you. I thought they would kill me. I thought my feelings would kill me. And so I held them in for years, years and years and years and years. I mean, what's the thing you tell me all the time when I'm down and out and feeling like I can't survive something? You're safe. You're sovereign. You're loved. And she you also said, and you've survived 100% of everything. 100%. <laughs> your your track record is 100%. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, indeed. And that's and what, and what a privilege this is to be on this time where we're forced. I mean, in the past, if one country went belly up, people just went to another country. And when we first hit lockdown, I was like, oh, this is interesting. No, we, no one could go anywhere. The whole world has to stop and look at themselves. What the devil will use for bad, God will use for good. Why? 
because the devil can't create anything. Mm -hmm. It can only steal from God, steal from the light and invert it. So God's always the mastermind. Always. Because what they're trying to use for bad was actually originally created for good. So good can outsmart it every time. Mm -hmm. So, all right, you guys, you guys all, you've got this. You're awesome. You're superstars. You're rock stars. And once again, please make sure to wish Emmy a very happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. Thank we're you for grateful to be here in this battle with you, Emmy. We're very glad that you decided to shoot out of that small hole. Those <laughs> I won't say your age. I was gonna say how many years ago. I won't say your age. So Emmy, actually, actually, I was pulled out. I was sunny side up, and they had to pull me out with four steps. <laughs> you, know you were so like, I don't want to be here, so I'm gonna come ass out. Yeah, screw you guys. <laughs> better you know those pictures of infants that come out and they're flicking out yeah that's yeah, even better you're like no take this i don't want to be here i was forced to come back so i'm gonna just ass out to you guys <laughs> it's like i know there are male babies i've heard from not my, my nephew didn't do this but i've heard from some of my friends who have sons they came out peeing like they came <laughs> out with the wiener just <laughs> oh goodness I'm like, that would be my son. If I had a son, that would be, he would come out peeing. So, <laughs> <laughs> and if I wasn't in so much pain, I'd probably be laughing. Like, yeah, that's my son. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. that's my, um, so <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll make sure you wish Emmy the happiest, happiest of birthdays. Emmy, we love you so much. And we're so grateful that you decided to be born. Ass up and everything. So <laughs> thank you. All right, you guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye, Bye. everybody.